What's going on, ladies and gentlemen? It's your boy Valerio Your White, checking back in with another video. I go by V for short, and in this video, I will be sharing with you how I pass the AWS Solutions Architect Associate. All right, let's get into it. Now, before we actually get started and how I receive my certification and the tips that I have for you, I like to go ahead and make our way to credibly.com so I can show the verification of my Solutions Architect Associate, okay? So let's head to the website, and if you see on the screen, this is the Solutions Architect Associate for myself, Valeria White, and let's click on Verify Badge. And you will see that this certification was issued to me February 13th, 2023 by AWS, okay? So this is the verification. Now let's go ahead and go with some of the steps and the tips of how I pass and receive this certification. Now, step number one that I took was I went and studied and passed the AWS Cloud Practitioner exam first. And I'm going to go ahead and leave a link in the bottom of the, the video in the description of where I actually describe the five tips that I use to pass the Cloud Practitioner, right? So you can go back to that video and review it as a recap. But the reason why I believe this first step is so important is because the Cloud Practitioner exam gives you a high level overview of all of the important services that you're going to see in the solutions architect exam okay so it is a really good idea to go ahead especially if you're new like if you're not new to aws then you can go ahead and continue along this video right but for the people who are new and you're new to cloud computing and you're new to aws i highly recommend that you study and take the cloud practitioner as a foundational entry level into AWS. And then once you get comfortable with that, you have a high level overview of all the services because what the solutions architect uh, exam is going to test you on is those same services, but on a deeper level, they're going to be more scenario based, right? So if you already have a general overview of all the services, which you will gain that knowledge from studying for the cloud practitioner uh, exam, you would be very well equipped to go ahead and begin your studies to pass the Solutions Architect Associate, okay? So that's my step number one. Now, the second step that I use in order to pass the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate is I went through the exam guide, okay? So I have it pulled up on the screen and I just wanna quickly go over high level some of the most important things. So the exam guide is gonna give you an introduction of the test. Uh, they're gonna tell you what type of responses and questions you should see on the test. So you're gonna be seeing multiple choice and multiple responses, right? Let's keep going down. Uh, the results is gonna be a score based through a thousand, excuse me, a hundred through a thousand and a passing test is gonna be 720 or above, okay? Anything below that will be a failing score. Let's keep going down. So this is one of the most important sections of the exam guide. They go through what type of topics and, uh, and scenarios you should expect to see on the exam. So they have four different scenarios, four different topics, design uh, secure architectures, design resilient architectures, design high performance architectures, and design cost optimized architectures. And there's a percentage of how much each of these topics are weighed. So you'll see that secure architectures are currently weighed more than cost optimized architectures, okay? and they further detail what these domains entail. If you continue to scroll down, they talk about domain one and everything, knowledge and the skills. If you keep going down, they talk about domain two, three, and as well as domain four, okay? And the last thing I wanna share and highlight in the exam guide, if you keep going down at the very bottom, you should have an appendix. And the appendix is really good because it gives you an overview of all of the services that could potentially show up in the exam. So you see CloudFormation, you'll see um, Kinesis video streams, et cetera, et cetera. And again, if you do decide to take the Cloud Practitioner exam first, most of these, I would say at least about 90% of all of these services would already be described and you would already have an understanding at least at a high level of what each of them entails, okay? So that's my step number two. Okay, so step number three is that I went and paid for a Udemy course, okay? The particular course that I paid for, if you look on the screen, is called the Ultimate AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate, okay? It's by Stefan Merrick, and I cannot recommend this course more than I already am, okay? This is a phenomenal course, right? The really great thing about the course is that uh, it comes with over 800 slides, PowerPoint slides, giving you all of the information needed, giving you scenarios. He goes through 
um, a lot of hands-on of uh, pretty much all the major services. He talks about different architecture design, one tier, two tier, three tier uh, architecture, so you can understand you know, how everything comes together, right? So when you're taking this, uh, going through this course, right? Here are some of the things that I recommend that you do. I recommend you go through this course at least twice, right? At least twice. You can put the speed from 1x to 2x, right? So if you want to go through it quicker, just put it up to 2x. So I would definitely recommend you go through this course twice. I also highly recommend that you go through the hands-on twice for the VPC part of this uh, course, right? And definitely for the VPC part, and there's some other parts that I recommend as well, but definitely for the VPC part, you want to go through the hands-on twice so you can really understand practically how everything comes together, okay? That's going to help you tremendously when taking the test, right? And the last thing I want to say is when you're taking this uh, this course, I want you to study for at least one hour a day, minimum of one hour a day, right? So we learn better if we see the information day after day after day, repetitively, consistently, instead of you were to study one day on Monday for several hours and then don't study until the following Monday, right? You're not going to retain information like that, okay? So again, this is a huge tip. Study for at least one hour a day. If you want to go through it quicker, do two hours, do three hours, do four hours, but commit yourself to at least one hour a day, okay? So that's step number three. Okay, so step number four that I use to pass the AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate is I took multiple, multiple practice tests. I probably took at least five different practice tests, okay? So if you decide to go ahead and purchase the previous course on step number three, it comes with a practice test. Take that test, right? And in that test, uh, Stefan Merrick is going to give you explanation as to why that answer is correct and even why the wrong answers are wrong, right? So you're going to get a deeper level of understanding, right? Practice test is going to help you tremendously to understand the type of questions to be prepared for once you actually take the real exam, okay? Now, if you want to take more practice tests, what I personally did, I went ahead and purchased Stefan Merrick's additional Udemy course that only gives practice tests. So if you look on the screen, it's called the Practice Exam AWS Certified Solutions Architect Associate, okay? I recommend you buy this as well. It comes with six more practice tests, okay? That's going to be very invaluable. You want to go through at least four practice tests, right? That's going to help you out tremendously, all right? So that's going to be my step number four. Now, the last thing I really want to talk about in how I passed the AWS Certified Solutions Architect, I want to give you some tips. I want to talk about the test, okay? And I'm not going to lie. I struggled, right? Taking this test, I struggled going through the entire test. I used the entire time allowed it uh, for this test, right? And here's how I was able to go ahead and pass it regardless of my challenges, right? So when you're taking the test, if you're up against a question and you're reading it and you're trying to understand what it is, first thing first, process of elimination. That is the first thing. If you automatically see that a solution looks wrong, if it looks like it could be right, but it's complicated, more than likely it is not right, okay? So the first thing you want to do is understand the question and then immediately go to a process of elimination, okay? The second thing that you want to do when you're taking the test, let's say you eliminate one or two answers, right? And you're still stuck on the last two or the, or the last three, right? What you want to do is you don't want to get caught up and stuck on this question. So what the uh, what the test allows you to do once you're actually taking the official test, you can flag that question and you can even type notes on that specific question. So what I did was when there was a question where I was on it for entirely too long because you don't want to take too much time, right? Your time. You want to go ahead and flag the question. There's like a flag button that you can click and also click the note button on that on that question and type in the notes that you narrowed it down to maybe question to maybe answer a and b all right so again i'm gonna go over that again if you take it too long on a question you want to flag it go to the notes and in your notes section say that you either narrowed it down to a and b right so the next time you when you come back to that question once you finish with all the other questions you immediately kind of know where your mindset was then okay and the reason why this is so good is because you're saving time right you know in addition to that, you may get a clue from the other questions as you continue to go along. 
you may allow your you, you allow your mind to relax and you may see something on another question so when you go back you say okay boom i know it's a right boom i know it's b okay so that is going to be very very important all right ladies and gentlemen that concludes the video for how i pass the aws certified solutions architect associate okay if you like this comment please leave a thumbs up if you're taking the certified solutions architect associate yourself or if you know somebody who needs help Make sure you to share this video, leave a comment down below, okay? And, you know, if you like this type of content, the tech content that I'm talking about, please make sure to go ahead and subscribe to the channel, okay? So if I can do it, you all can do it. I struggled, but I got through it, and I know you all can as well, okay? As my shirt says, let's win, okay? So that concludes the video. I want to say peace out and God bless.